Good day, everybody. My name is Mike Zetkins from the Connect for Climate program at the World Bank. Uh, we're coming to you live from the Jeff Assembly here in Vietnam. This is a series of live interviews under the uh, Jeff Live discussions. So follow, follow us and engage with us with the hashtag Jeff Live. Um, we're addressing some of our biggest environmental challenges here. We're looking at the solutions. We're looking at the action already on, on, on the table. Um, so to that effect, I'd, I'd like to introduce my panelists here. My, uh, I'm joined by Rosina Bierbaum. Thank you so very much for joining me. Thank you. And Rosina, is the, uh, she's the chair of the Jeff Scientific and Technical Advisory Panel. Um, and you've got also a, a wealth of academic uh, background. <laughs> you're, you're a professor at the University of Michigan as well as the University of Maryland. Um, so maybe w w I think we're going to focus a little bit on the role of science uh, okay. in the Jeff. So just to get us started, what is really the, the scientific and te technical advisory panel of the Jeff? What's your role? What's your involvement here at the assembly? Okay. So the STAP, as we like to call the Science and Technical Advisory Panel of the Jeff, its role is to bring science into the Jeff so that the programs and projects have a scientific basis. But equally important, it's to take the needs of the Jeff back out to the academic community. And it's no surprise that often the science that happens in the ivory tower of academia has to be translated into usable information for practitioners. And so that's what we really try to do, make sure that projects and programs are based on the best science and help as projects are reviewed to improve them, find lessons learned, best practices. So science to the Jeff and the Jeff to science. Absolutely, and, and science is so fundamental to understanding our global commons. Um, maybe if, if you could explain a little bit about, firstly, what is our global commons? I don't think everybody knows what that term means. Um, and unpack how science helps define our global commons as well as helps identify where the challenges are. <laughs> Well, I think global commons might have as many definitions as people that you ask about it. Uh, but to me, the global commons is all of the goods and services the planet provides that people can use. And it's often these things, the ecosystem services, biodiversity, that are not monetized. And so they're not necessarily valued in the normal economic systems. So the Jeff was set up to make sure that we can implement all the multilateral environmental agreements. So keeping, avoid, avoiding desertification, protecting biodiversity, um, mitigating climate change, coping with climate change, international waters. So all of those issues that don't automatically have an economic value, but are truly the life support system of the planet, without which none of us would be here. And, and science is so fundamental in identifying the roles of, of these services and goods, and also in a way uh, quantifying them and, and seeing what kind of services us society, but also all of life does derive from our global environment, our global commons. Yes, absolutely. I think science has been slow to assign dollar amounts to things like biodiversity, um, but actually we're getting a little better at understanding how these underpinnings of the life support system can actually lead to economic benefit or loss. And so what we focused on in the staff for this particular assembly was to help the Jeff as it moves into Jeff 7 and this era where transformation is needed because we know incremental change is not to be sufficient to protect against the degradation of the planet. We focused our papers on, I guess I would say, really three themes. One is the science of integration. That is, how do you think in a systems way, uh, whether it be across disciplines in science or across parts of the ecology, water, land, air, energy, and how can you come up with solutions that will give you a bigger bang for the buck, if you will, that will solve multiple problems at the same time and not make another problem worse. So this idea of thinking in a systems approach to tackle multiple problems and to make sure you're not creating a new one at the same time. And the second area that we focused on uh, was innovation because it's clear again that the rate of environmental degradation perhaps is increasing. And we really need to come up with new ideas, and, and some of those will come from science, 
but it'll also be new partnerships, new institutions, working with the private sector where things are monetized. And so we focus on a number of papers that could help the Jeff think about bringing innovative ideas, including in science, into it. And then the third area we focused on very much is learning because there are so many projects happening in so many parts of the world. Some work and some don't. And so it's important to learn from the successes as well as from the failures and make sure that those lessons learned can be shared very widely and very quickly so that mistakes will not be replicated, but that which works can be multiplied very quickly. Absolutely. And, and I'm sure there's quite a lot of overlap in that you know, a lot of innovation is derived from learning as well as the integration is probably from lessons learned, but also looking ahead, how to enhance um, our action to make it a lot more systematic. Um, so, so maybe just looking forward, um, a lot of the discussion here at the Jeff Assembly has been around transformational change, mm -hmm. around systematic uh, changes that, that will result in large scale um, uh, uh, environmental protection, and large-scale action on all our different global commons. Um, so transformational change, how do we get there? Um, what's the role of, you've already highlighted innovation, but also what's the role of risk and overcoming risk? Hmm. Well, that, that's a very big question. I, I think I would say to achieve transformation and solve environmental degradation. It means the old kind of linear and incremental approach to problems can't be pursued. And one of the things that I think has been very typical is we sort of extract natural resources or take and then we use them or make something and then we throw them away or waste something. And so instead, transformation would be thinking of things in a more circular economy way, if you will, that the resource, the, the waste coming out becomes resources to go back in. So t two of the papers that we actually prepared for this assembly um, are looking at how you could think of the entire food system as more of a circular economy. Shockingly, almost half of the food in the world is wasted in the wealthy countries because it's thrown away and not eaten and in the poorer countries because they can't get it to markets. Well, that's a, a very good example of how we can have a huge transformational impact if we can capture the waste on both sides. Uh, similarly, we looked at plastics, which is becoming just an amazing problem, not just in the ocean, but we're finding it in our tap water as well as uh, shellfish and fish. Um, and again, if we could think of different raw materials, not fossil fuels, to produce something that has the same services as plastic, yeah and you know, then uh, reuse and not waste. That, that can be transformational. So those are the kind of things, moving away from linear and incremental thinking into really this systems thinking that can make a big difference. And, and, and the innovation and risk aspects of that both lie in, in the public sector. So I, I guess governments are, are trying to figure out how to implement the right policies to ensure that they have transformational action. Yes, and so, you know, here I'm supposed to be speaking to you about the science, but I, I must say science is never the loudest voice and it never has the final say. And I think one of the, the big changes since the last assembly has been the general recognition that while Jeff is focused on the environment, equal stools of the chair are um, the economic and the social aspects. So if you don't get the environmental, the economic, and the social aspects right in this continuum, you can't make transformational change. And so in answer to your question, yes, that means you have to have the institutions working with you. You have to have the policies working with you. You have to have the stakeholders wanting to do what you think is the right thing to do. And, and so that amalgam is, is really all co-equally important to effecting transformational change. And, and also, just in closing, also very much businesses. So businesses have to adopt this new framework, this new economic model of a circular economy to identify their ways of uh, producing goods and, and, and selling services to ensure that they also pick up on their waste and, and continue providing that service um, through the most effective and environmentally friendly way. 
It, well, that's a fabulous example to end on because the Jeff is a billion dollars a year, which is a huge amount, but on the other hand, not a huge amount when you think of the global economy. But the growth in interest in public-private partnerships and in the private sector learning that there is money to be made from things like the circular economy and that there is reputation to be made by being first in class and best in the green economy is really making a difference. And when you open up the financial markets, the, the amazing amount of transformation that you can get in the environment is magnifying the Jeff's impact greatly. Absolutely. And, and then just finally a message for, well, your students or for our Facebook Live <laughs> audience. Um, how, how can the younger generation be a part of this transformational change? How can they be the innovators within the business environment? How can they be the leaders in the policy space? How can they help contribute to building this low-carbon resilient future that, that we need? <laughs> I think the next generation is driven. I think when you talk to them, environmental sustainability is built into their core. 75% of my students are vegetarian, not for health reasons, but for environmental reasons. And what gives me great hope is that your generation thinks more automatically in a systems way. You can put together the pieces of uh, environmental science and chemistry and business and law and policy. And so I think that the students should <laughs> learn different disciplines, really be interdisciplinary, speak the languages of science, economics, and policy. Um, and that that is, to me, the most optimistic thing going because your generation thinks in a way that can lead to transformation. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Rosina. Thank you so very much for being with us live on Connect for Climate's Facebook. Um, you've heard it. Science is at the base of all the environmental action that we need. Um, science is driving our framework, and we can all be a part of this transformational change. Thank you very much. Thank you, Max.